of settlement patterns, we're going to be looking at various examples such as your dispersed, your nucleated, your linear, and your radial. We're going to be looking at ways to identify them. We're going to be looking at the definition, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each. So let us begin with the first one. So the first type of settlement that we will be looking at would be our dispersed rural settlements. So what do we notice about this image? We notice that the settlements are located very far from each other. Right, that is your dispersed rural settlements. Your settlements are located far from each other. And because of that, you will have plenty land for farming. So let's look at the definition, right? Dispersed rural settlements consist of individual farms or houses spread out over a large area rather than clustered together. This pattern is typical in agricultural areas where land is used for farming, and where there's no need for people to live close to each other. So what are the advantages of dispersed rural settlements? Let us look at them. So the first advantage would be it provides more privacy for residents. Now we know how irritating some neighbors can be, but because you're living so far away from them, you're going to have plenty of privacy. It's suitable for large-scale agriculture as each farm has extensive land. So because your land is so large, you can practice large-scale farming. So you can use these crops to sell it and make money and you can obviously, you know, use it to provide for your family. Another advantage would be it reduces the risk of diseases spreading between households due to physical distance. Now because you're located so far away from people, it's going to be almost no risk of any diseases being spread. Because if we look at areas where people are located very close to each other, diseases are very easily spread. So now we're going to look at the disadvantages. So what is the first disadvantage? Can lead to isolation as houses are far apart. Now we know some people are very social people and because your house is located so far away from others, there's going to be no interaction and that will lead to isolation. Now remember, isolation can also lead to crime happening, right? So if you look at our next point, it says, it's easy for criminals to target residents because of isolation. Now, if you're located far away from anyone else, it's going to be very easy for criminals to target you because there are going to be no witnesses and there's going to be no one to be able to stop them. It's very easy for them to get away. The third disadvantage would be, Infrastructure such as roads and electricity is costly to implement over vast areas. Now we are looking at your nucleated rural settlement. And if we look at the picture, we can see that there are houses located very close to each other. They are very small plots of land for farming. And to be honest, if I'm looking at this, I can actually think of more disadvantages than advantages. So let's look at the definition, then we'll get to the advantages and disadvantages. So Nucleated settlements are clusters of houses grouped closely together, often around a market, church, or road intersection. This pattern is common where people need to be close to resources, social centers, or services. So what are the advantages of living in a nucleated rural settlement? The first advantage would be it's easier to provide services like schools, healthcare, and shops in one central location. It enhances social interaction and support amongst residents. Remember, you're going to be very close to people, so you're going to be seeing them every single day, and that will enhance social interaction. It's more secure as people live closer and can look out for each other. Remember, because these settlements are located so close to each other, it's going to be hard for criminals to target these settlements as there are going to be a lot of witnesses, and because a lot of people are around, it's easier to get caught. So criminals are less likely to target you in a nucleated rural settlement. Now let's look at the disadvantages. So there's limited space for expanding each household or farm because these uh, settlements are located so close to each other, there's not much space to expand. There's a risk of disease spreading more easily in crowded areas. Remember, everyone is going to be so close to each other Diseases like TB will be very easily spread amongst people. Conflicts can arise over shared resources or land. So we know how people are. And if you are living so close to other people, 
there are constantly going to be conflicts that arise, right? Some people can say, oh, this is their land. And you know that that is your land. So you can know there's going to be a conflict because of that. Another major disadvantage will be the lack of privacy. Remember, people are located so close to you that sometimes maybe even if you fart in your house, they'll be able to hear it next door. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to the next type of settlement. Now we are looking at linear settlements. Now what is the definition of linear? So if you're looking at it in the form of an adjective, the definition of linear is something that is arranged in a straight line, right? And you can see that in this picture, the houses that are located along a road. So that is basically how you identify a linear settlement. It will be built along either a road or a river, something like that. Linear settlements develop along a line such as a road, river, railway or coastline. Houses and buildings are organized in a line, making them easily accessible to transportation routes. So what are the advantages of this? The first advantage will be good access to transportation, making movement of goods and people efficient. Remember, there's only one road. And because of that, you will have very good access to transportation. It's usually close to water sources, especially if the line follows a river. Now, obviously, in our example here, we're looking at a road, not a river. But if there was a river, then obviously you'll be very close to this river and it will greatly benefit you. The third advantage would be it's easier for government and organizations to provide infrastructure like roads and electricity. So now let's look at the disadvantages. So there will be limited expansion options as settlements are restricted to the line. It can create congestion if the line becomes densely populated. It's vulnerable to natural hazards like floods if near a river or coastline. Now let's look at the fourth type of settlement, which is a planned or a round settlement. Now we can see in the center there's a garden there or a park, whatever you would like to call it. And the settlement is built in a circular shape. That's why it's called a round settlement. Round or planned settlements are circular in structure, often with a central point such as a village green or meeting place. This type is sometimes planned for defensive purposes as a way to efficiently use space around a central resource. So what are the advantages of planned settlements? The first advantage would be it's good for defense as residents can organize quickly around the center. There's efficient use of land with everything arranged around a central point. It fosters a strong sense of community as houses face inward towards the center. Let's look at the disadvantages. There's limited room for expansion as the round shape can restrict growth. It's not suitable for large scale agriculture or industries requiring more space. Can you see there's no area to farm here? So that's a major disadvantage, especially if you rely on farming for your main source of income. Access to central resources can become congested if population density increases. Now we're looking at crossroad settlements. Now you can see that all these roads meet at a central point, right? And around the central point, you can see there are many vendors. So you can see someone is selling something here, there's a store here, there are stores there, and there's another stall here. So crossroads settlements develop where two or more roads intersect, creating a central area for trade and services. The setup is ideal for small villages that depend on traffic from different routes. So what are the advantages of this? So the first advantage will be often become trading hubs due to traffic from multiple directions, as we can see there's a lot of traffic that's going to be coming in from multiple directions and that will allow it to become a trading hub. Access to transport networks from multiple points. Growth potential as more people settle near the crossroad for economic benefits. But if we're looking at the disadvantages, we can see that crossroad settlements will be vulnerable to congestion as traffic increases. It will be prone to pollution and noise due to vehicle movement. It will be limited to the intersections which can constrain expansion. Now we're looking at the last type of settlement which is your 
semi-circular settlements. Now we can see there are chalets that are built along a coast and I'm sure most of us would rather be here in these chalets rather than studying. So semi-circular settlements are arranged in a half circle, usually along the coast or along a river bend or a hill, providing natural protection or scenic benefits. What are the advantages of this? It uses natural features effectively for defense or access to resources. Often scenic, attracting tourism or enhancing the quality of life. It's space efficient and good for a balanced population density. But then what are the disadvantages? There's limited space for expansion in the opposite direction from the natural feature. Infrastructure costs can be high if the layout complicates road or surface access. It's vulnerable to natural hazards depending on the feature, example, floods if near a river. We have now come to the end of the video. I want to thank you so much for learning with me today. Remember, if you have any questions, if you are confused about anything, then please do leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, I'm here to help you with anything. If you are confused about anything, then I'm more than happy to help you with that. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found that you've learned new things, then please give the video a like. And if you want more geography content, then please subscribe. To those that are writing soon, I want to wish you all the best. Remember to study hard and just give it your best shot. I know it's very easy for me to say that and only you know how hard it really is. But please do try and I know you're going to do well. So till the next video, please take care. May God bless each and every one of you. Goodbye.